Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick Anderson of Madison Maximize Living. While many people have a routine of setting up goals once a year, many stop reviewing those goals after several weeks and never achieve them. On this week's show, we're going to discuss 15 ways to maximize your goal achievement. As humans, the desire to reach goals and achieve is ingrained in our DNA. We're rarely happier than we are utilizing all our gifts and talents to achieve our personal and meaningful worthwhile goals. Join us for Maximizing Your Life Through Goal Achievement, coming up next on Maximize Living. Welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. We're talking today again about maximizing your life through goal achievement, part two. Uh, we did another episode on this and we're gonna drill down into more specifics this time on how you can actually achieve your goals. So our first step here, um, we've got 15 steps. The first one is just deciding what you want. That's which can, the hardest can one. can be a hard too. thing for want? people, yeah. And, and you know, I think the key here is deciding your goals, not what society tells you you should want. So uh, break those down into the categories and decide what you want. So things either happen by design or they happen by chance. And I'd rather design a life by setting goals and directions than to just let chance take its, take its course. Yeah, why not at least give it a try for sure. We're really uh, wired for uh, goal setting. Our bodies are um, just, uh, we're goal setting organisms. We strive to achieve and uh, grow. Um, we're, we're wired for what Tony Robbins calls Kanai, C-A-N-I, constant and never-ending improvement in whatever area you choose, but we're really wired to, to work to improve. Uh, and there's great joy in doing that. So uh, when you set the goal, you want to uh, be congruent with your own belief system. We talked in that on the last show, that it's really congruent with what you want. And you want to say it in terms like, I will be this, or I will have this, or I have this. And, and act Envision as it. if. Act as if is really important. And then the size of the goal matters. It's right size goal matters. Uh, so if they're too small, they can be boring and not achievable. But uh, it's nice to throw in some, I like to call them God size goals. They, you know, they're just so <laughs> big, it's like, that's crazy. But it's also make sure you have some small enough to make sure you can achieve them. And the key, of course, is to reward yourself every step of the way. Yeah, we'll talk more about that. that yeah, that's that's an interesting thing too. Um, so let's talk a little bit about step number two. So now you know you know what your goals are. Now you want to write those down. Yeah, three percent of people write their goals down, and less than that read them every day and night. And that's all you have to really do is write them down, read them, break them down, start taking action. And you know, there's a story. Jim Carrey at one point in his career had hardly any money at all. He was really down and out. So putting this to work, he set a goal. He wrote a check to himself for services rendered, paid to Jim Carrey for acting services rendered, $10 million. And he carried that around in his wallet for a year. Guess what happened? Sure enough. We he got hired to do the film Mask and his income from that movie was $10 million. Oh, wow. You know, isn't that wow. fun hearing stories like that? Yeah. I mean, that, that just encourages and, and, and gets you thinking about making sure you ask the right, right questions and, and, and open up that possibility. But if you never ask, it won't open up. So write that check to yourself today. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Why stop at 10, really? <laughs> so We now, don't want to get greedy. <laughs> right, okay, we'll, we'll start, we'll, start small. <laughs> we'll We'll work our way up to the billions later. So now you want to categorize your goal. We talked a little bit about on the last show too, about um, breaking this down, making sure you've got a well-rounded life really with yes. your goals. So we talk about the categories of um, physical, uh, fitness, mental, emotional, things like that. Uh, the mind and your education, are you growing? Are you growing mentally? Are you learning new things? Um, spiritual, are you growing in a spiritual way? Uh, financial, uh, are you moving in a positive direction? Do you have some level of security? Uh, uh, relationships, how are, how are those? And uh, recreation, do you have things planned for recreation that you do on a regular basis? Because you will perform better if you have recreational things planned and vacations planned. 
you know, I always, you know, work, I like to work and always have some kind of vacation, something planned, and then work seems so much easier. Otherwise, the drudgery, of, if you have a job, right. you know, it's like, yeah. uh, like that, where you might just say, all I ever do is work. But when you got uh, six weeks from now, you know, going someplace, and then it makes that hard work much easier. So you just play little games with yourself and it, it really helps. And then work uh, career and are you at, where you're at um, on that. And of course what we do is we rate each of our um, performances or where we think we're at on the zero to 10 scale and kind of make a wheel out of that and we want to make a round wheel with long spokes. It would be nice if everything we had on the six, seven categories was all eight, nine or 10, but rarely does that happen. So. Don't compare it to anyone, to, you know, just compare it to what you want and what your goals are. Start where you but are. But categorize, and so knowing where you're at is the purpose of that exercise with the, the wheel of life, as we call it. Know where you're at, so then you can set better targets. We'll have more on that right after the break. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living. Send your email to drpat at wi57.tv. Welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. We're talking today about maximizing your life through achieving your goals. This is part two um, of a two-part episode. Um, so we're talking about 15 steps to actually achieving your goals this year. So number four here is making your, your goals clear and measurable. Um, so you want to first figure out what you want, set your goals, write them down, and now make sure you're clear. So what do you mean by that? You want to spend some time making sure it's a very clear goal so you know when you reached it. And what are your markers? What are your what is your uh, way of measuring it? Is it is it a, is it financial? Is it a, a physical feat? Uh, what what type of how will you know when you get there? It's really important so it's measurable. So it's not a wishy washy thing. I want to feel better every morning. Mm -hmm. You want to say I want to feel this way. You know. And so making it clear it takes some time to clarify those goals and make them make them measurable so you know that you will attain it. Right. It seems like it would be much more likely to attain, too, if you've got it nailed down and specifically. The, yeah, exactly. And the clearer it is, the more inspiring it is. And so that's what we really want to motivate in each person. It's just, this is something. This is in my DNA. I was born for this. Mm -hmm. And when you start talking that way, this is what happens. It starts to happen. It starts to happen. Yeah. Wow. Isn't How that cool. cool stuff? So you want to have a deadline too, number five, have a deadline and a goal date. Because you've said to me before, goals are dreams without a deadline. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. true. Yeah, goals <laughs> are just wishes if there's no deadline. Yeah. You wish away, wish, 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 and nothing happens. But when you have a deadline, we like to, I don't like the word deadline, deadline. Yeah. Yeah. I like goal line better. Yeah, you know, goal like, line, there you the go. Goal line. That's a more positive, uh, more inspiring. Um, so a goal, um, a short-term goal would be not less than 30 days, and a long-term goal best not, you know, more than a year, just about a year. That doesn't mean we can't have lifetime goals and five-year plans and, you know, 10-year plans, things like that, but the 30 days for a shorter goal and one year for a longer goal really makes a difference. And uh, set when you're going to achieve it by. And that's and, when you get your reward or punishment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you could break down some of those some of those big goals. If you've got a lifetime goal, what can I do this year? Yeah, something like exactly. that. Chunk it down. So talking about rewards and punishments, let's talk about number six. Have a reward. Yes, have a reward for for reaching it. Now, the, uh, but it's got to be something you really want, and you can go buy your LCD TV, go buy your stereo, the new outfit, uh, the tickets to the opera mm -hmm. that you always wanted to see, where, whatever it is. But the goal here is you can't. The idea here is you can't use them until your goal, until you reach your goal. And so you want a reward that really inspires you. And you will reach down and, uh, and it will cause you to do things and be more innovative and more sustained focused than you ever had before. That is a big secret. Now we have a pain pleasure paradigm. We are either a people who avoid pain predominantly mm -hmm. or we may be a personality that is attracted to pleasure predominantly. And we're each a little bit of both, but some some really will be more attracted to pleasure. For for like for myself, pleasure would drive me because uh, as a weightlifter, you go through pain. I, if I was avoiding pain, I probably wouldn't exercise. You would do it, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so we'll pay a price for a future benefit. 
So let's tie into that then with number seven. Um, you know, having having a penalty. You yes. call it a vomit-inducing yeah, penalty. It's not a normal <laughs> see where penalty. You're going with this. <laughs> this is a penalty that you will just cringe if you have to do it. Maybe go apologize, admit you're wrong, maybe clean latrines somewhere, you know, <laughs> uh, shovel some sidewalk, and uh, you know, rake your neighbor's leaves that you don't like. Uh, but the other, the other um, thing with that penalty is, is really the reward that you just were going to achieve. Uh -huh. You get, open up your big new TV or your new furniture. Uh, you have to give that away to somebody. Yeah. So that's the whole idea of having uh, two bulldogs on your butt, the penalty, the mm -hmm. vomit inducing penalty. <laughs> and then giving it away. There's the two bulldogs. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the diamond to reach for, to, to leap towards. And it's the motivation that causes us to achieve our goals. And those reward penalty paradigm really helps. And you get the extra reward of actually having achieved your goal. Exactly. Too. So stay with us. We'll have more on goals right after the break. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living. Send your email to drpat at wi57.tv. Welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. We're talking about achieving your goals today. And during the break, you started to tell me a story, but you said we had to wait till we were on air. So I want to share with all of you about a kid who had a goal, set a goal really, really high, and yeah. he was going to buy himself doctor, a car. He's a very young doctor. He said very, very high goals, and his his uh, reward was this fancy car, sports car, and his goal was really astronomically high. And uh, his coach at the time says, "Well, that's good, but who are you going to give it to?" Who are you going to give your car to if you don't reach your goal? All of a sudden, his goals started to come down to <laughs> a little bit more realistic. So the reward penalty paradigm, the pain pleasure uh -huh. paradigm, really works to right size those goals and make them attainable. So it's okay if you kind of resize it. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> did he achieve it? I don't know. Oh, I mean, I'm sure he did. I mean, if he right, if he sized it down. When the car is at stake, I'm sure he did. I bet he did. So we talked a little bit too before the break about um, taking like a big goal that you might have a lifetime goal and breaking it down into little pieces maybe for this year. So that brings us into number eight, chunking it down. Chunk it down. We we have fairly lofty goals that mean a lot to us. And the more you can make baby steps and do a baby step every day, the more achievable it is. Until you get to the very top of your goal, which could be almost insurmountable. It's like, how do you, you know, eat an elephant? Well, one, one bite at a time. <laughs> and it's kind of like that with a goal, and we often don't do that. So take action every day towards it. Um, but we call it the, the, the big goal, be a, a BHAG. BHAG, what's BHAG. this? BHAG. It's a big, hairy, audacious goal. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so it's just like, wow, that's huge. <laughs> that's the big one. That's the big, that's that's the the big goal. So, yeah, that's the 747. Yeah, that's the 747. But you <laughs> chunk it down yeah. and go, you know, bit by bit. And then the key with each step is to celebrate the victory. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. So the more you break chunk down a goal, the more chances you have to celebrate. The more you celebrate, the more it becomes real. As you can see, it coming to fruition. See, these are just little celebrations for these little goals. Well, I like to celebrate, you so yeah. you can celebrate all you want. <laughs> if, if you can buy more than one TV for yourself, go for it. <laughs> so then that kind of leads into number nine, taking action every day. So they, they sort of pair together, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. We want to um, uh, read, read your goals day and night. So keep them by your uh, bed stand and read them day and night. The last thing on your mind is really valuable for George, your subconscious mind, to work on. <laughs> Because why, why do all the hard work? Let George do it. <laughs> Let the heavy lifting be done subcon yeah. subconsciously. And so, um, and then take steps towards your goal every day. Some kind of step, some kind of new thing. And as you, as you uh, move forward, you'll get more innovation, more ideas how to reach your goal all the time. So it isn't so much, you, first you want to know what you want. Then you want to know why you want it. And then you want to know when you want it. Then the how you get there becomes easy when you know when, why, and how. When, and, why, and how. Yeah, when, uh, what, when. What, when, and why. why. And the big why is, there's all books written on just why. What's the big why? What's your big why? And, and when you know that, you've come a long ways in, in achieving. Wow. So, believing. Achieving and believing. <laughs> so you, you, exactly. Ten. So you want to you wanna believe your goal, even if there are these big pie-in-the-sky ideas. Yeah, if exactly. you believe it, that's very powerful. Yeah, 
First she conceives, the mind conceives, and then it believes, and then it achieves. That's Norman uh, Vincent Peels, I believe it was. Or no, that was the um, uh, guy who wrote Laws of Success. Okay. He, uh, I'll think of his name. But uh, having a goal board is a really good way of doing it. Uh, put your pictures up. And I once had a goal board. I used to drive a beater of a car when I first started practice. And I saw this, I'm kind of a car guy, I saw this car, it was just a great car, it was a, a T-top 280Z uh, Datsun years and years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, well, lo and behold, in the magazine they had a fold-out picture of this incredible car, T-top car, and so I put it up on a board. And within three months, I ended up owning that same car. Oh, it was really? in a showroom in, in Milwaukee uh, on a cold, rainy day. And I saw it and was able to get it. Wow. And it's just amazing. What, so be careful what you put on your goal board because it starts to happen. Because it starts to come into your life. So you want to uh, visualize. You want to believe, but you want to visualize. But even beyond visualizing, we call it visioneering. It's like engineering with more specificity. We want to visioneer, see it, feel it, taste it. Make it real to Make yourself. Make it real to yourself. We'll have more on that right after the break. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living. Send your email to drpat at wi57.tv. Welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. We're talking about achieving your dreams today, achieving your goals in 2017 and beyond. Um, so you want to you wanna believe. You want to truly believe your goals are going to happen. Yeah, the more you can see it, feel it, taste it, the more it's going to come into reality. Thoughts are things. So when you write it down and believe it and visioneer it, it becomes much more likely to happen. Um, so you must first, we achieve things twice. First, on the inside in our minds, we see it. And okay. then it comes to reality. So I love that statement. You know, we see, first you must see it and believe it and then you'll achieve it. You'll achieve it. You see it twice. Wow. And then what if in the positive? So see, what if I actually do this? What am, who am I going to tell? It reminds me of a, the, what we call the miracle question. Uh -huh. Who am I first going to tell when I achieve this? How will I feel? What will I do that day? When I, you know, that, that, those are motivating things to ask yourself and it helps drive you towards it. But what if in the positive is one of my favorite things because so many people live their life on what if in the negative. What if I don't mm -hmm. pass this test? What if I don't get this job? What if I don't? And they're really catastrophizing and mm -hmm. holding themselves back. And that's, that's cool too, because it seems like you're really making it real too when you're imagining, who am I gonna tell? What am I gonna do that day? That's, that's great to really believe that this is gonna occur. And then you wanna be held accountable, number 11. Yes, tell everyone you know about your goal. The reward and the penalty. So you can't just cop out, well, I'm just going to keep this TV. Or <laughs> yeah, this no, new, no, new that would, that would not be functional. <laughs> so you, you, you've, you've got to be held accountable. And number 12, you want to mirror those who have already reached your goal. Right, have a mentor or someone who's already doing what you've done. It's really powerful. Why recreate the wheel? So have a mentor, uh, and it makes a huge difference in, in achieving it. And probably reaffirm the fact that this is possible. You can do it. This has been mm -hmm. done. It's been done. You can do it. If my neighbor could do it, I can do it. <laughs> you know, right. If they can do it, I can certainly it's do it. Certainly you, know, you can do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And never give up. I like this one. Yeah, never give up. Um, I like what Winston Churchill said. Uh, the, the world cannot refuse a man or woman with a made-up mind. So when your mind is made up and you're moving all, and you're all in, the world starts to turn towards you. Earth moves when you do that. Things happen. And also, uh, I remember a commencement speech Winston Churchill gave He's at, at, during World War II. He said, never give up. Never, ever give up. And he sat down. That's it, what he it, said? That's all he said. Wow. And it, was, it, it, was, it was a commencement speech that everyone could memorize the whole thing. I'm just so short. <laughs> but powerful. <laughs> but never give powerful. up. Never, ever give up. And that's all he said for a commencement speech. And you do see that quote referenced. I mean, yeah. that, was, that was powerful. That's yeah. all he needed to say. Wow. Um, and number 14, it says reset. So what do you mean by resetting? Well, goal setting is an art. Things can happen. So, you know, about eight years ago, we had a stock market crash and mm -hmm. everything went down. So it wasn't, people couldn't do much about it. But what you can do is reset your goals and, and start climbing again. And so someone who's a, a pro or a positive person is going to just stand up and start climbing again. So they're down lower than they were. Okay, fine. 
It's what happened. Now I'm not, it's not going to stop from finding. It's that sheer mm. determination that you have to yeah. develop. And number 15, have fun. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things is to make sure you're enjoying every step along the way. Celebrate every, every uh, victory um, that you have and uh, reset goals constantly in each category of life. And it's a pleasure to achieve and be what we really reach our innate, atten uh, innate potential. So just quickly before we go, why do some people fail? Now, how can we safeguard everyone out there? Well, they choose goals that are somebody else's goals. It'll sound good to somebody else rather mm -hmm. than what they really feel they didn't get in touch with themselves. They're impotent goals. They don't inspire them themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they uh, have wrong, set, wrong targets. It's too high. It's too unattainable. Uh, they don't chunk it down. Uh, they don't have the right reward or penalty. Uh, all those kind of things will make a difference in, in achieving your goals, but I'll tell you what, it isn't always easy, but you're sure a whole lot better off working towards achieving goals than to never try. Than to never try and never know. Yeah. Well, stay with us. We'll have more on goals right after the break. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living. Send your email to drpat at wi57.tv. Thank you for watching Maximize Living through Goal Achievement, Part 2. Hopefully, these powerful tools will allow you to turn your dreams into reality with predictability. The subconscious mind is a powerful tool. When you give it the direction of meaningful goals, your body, mind, and spirit come alive like never before. As Winston Churchill said, the world cannot refuse a man with a made-up mind. For Maximize Living, I'm Dr. Patrick Anderson. Until next time, live well and God bless. Have your questions for Dr. Pat answered on an episode of Maximize Living. Send your email to drpat at wi57.tv.